<laughs> really? Good morning, Corey. Good morning. Is that Debbie uh, in the background? That is Debbie in the background. I'll move out of the way so you can see. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. You got two Debbies right yeah. in a row. Oh, Debbie Hickey's there, too. I can't see her, but I can see you. Oh, okay. Sorry, your camera's on. My what is on? Your camera's on. Uh, well, Leave it I on. What you get today? That's <laughs> <laughs> what you get. Surely, huh? I didn't know what you said. You said that's what you get. <laughs> when when Chuck tells me that I look so much better in person than I do online, it has something to do with you know five p.m. in the evening as opposed to six a.m. in the morning. But next time, yeah, I will look that. Well, that, oh, with that table, but the two side ones. It would be better here, so, so that we can yes. do all the big. Got it. That makes total So I don't know how it works. Well, again, it's nice and close. I'm saying this is That's okay. I don't I love working. We love that. Over the past 40 years. I sent you the um, PowerPoint right away. I got it. George, no. <laughs> I'm setting new trends. A new trend. Corey? With new yes, things, sir. New people. Um, and stuff. Oh, okay. yeah. When we do the PowerPoint, are you able to bring the PowerPoint up large and then make the, the people smaller? You have to do that on your end. I can't control how your screen is, but I can show you how to do it. You see at the bottom where it has the, the three little dots next to the end meeting button. Yep. Okay. So if you click those three dots. I did. Then you can see where it says change layout. Got it. When you change the layout, you can do it where it's sidebar, where anybody online is, is on the side. Or when Got it. presentation, you can do spotlight. And it's just the presentation. All right, well, that should be big enough we can see that. So. Okay. And is there a is there a full screen on this? I can get rid of the stuff on the top or not? Yes. No. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't. If, if this this should be okay. good. This Same be. thing with the three dots. If you do that yep. instead of change layout, there's a spot right underneath that says full screen. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Who did what? I'm just going to take one. Well, I'm just going to take one. Morning, Mark. I'm waiting at you. Big coffee, that's all. Hey, Jim. Jim, you might want to come back and turn on the way back to And what? Pass the coffee hat. Where it says post caption. Yep. Oh, yep. Because Mark's here. Yep. Oh, see that. I can make it louder. I don't just want to. I can make it louder. They're not valid, so yeah, I know that they want to get it.
Okay, 7.01, so we're going to start. Everybody that comes in late has to be embarrassed. Oh, it's going to be the wait break. Perfect. Thank you all for joining us this morning. David, if you'd like to make us in a prayer. Yes. Uh, dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for the gathering on Saturday. And those of us that missed it, uh, I know we missed a lot of fellowship or people share whatever we want to call it. And um, please uh, be with the families this time of year that are struggling or those that have had some type of emergencies occur and uh, keep us from COVID as it spreads. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, the group of folks around the world in the Rotary for all that they do to help out. Well done. Why don't you do this in the regions? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. I'm going to change it up a little bit this week. Rather than reciting the four-way test, I really like this rotary okay. mission. So let's let's read that together. Together, together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change. Obstacles and ourselves. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> And we don't have any. Oh, be seated, please. <laughs> Stand to attention. <laughs> Simon says. Um, can't read that out there, so I'm going to go by memory. We don't have any visitors this morning, although we would really like to welcome Debbie back. To, to join us in person. I saw good to see this morning, Pace. Um, no. Oh, <laughs> thank you, God. I got, I got my book. He had to be the agenda because I can't read up there. Um, does anybody have happy dollars this morning? Or sad? Or grumbles? Or complaints? And I will start out with $5 on behalf of the Hollands for hosting their Christmas party. Uh, I think this is the fourth year in a row that they've done it. And it's become a very nice tradition. I think those that were and attendance had a wonderful time. We had about 25 people there. Okay. So it's a little crowded in, in Holland's house, especially when we can't go outside. Oh, come on, Rex. Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll put $5 in for for the Hollands. I'll put $5 in for Do you have something that you're happy about that you want to brag on? Or? We'd be there at the party. What a wonderful event. What a really good night. Chuck. Did just call me before while I was setting up the computer that someone did leave an orange or gray coat. He is not sure if it's orange on the inside, or gray on the inside, or whatever it is, but uh, he will take it to the church if it belongs to somebody. I'll have Corey put something out as well. So, but I'll take you. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But yeah. I'll have Corey post something. Somebody's missing a coat. We'll Jim? see that again. Yes. Five dollars for the party. It was a. It was amazing. Um, thanks to Chuck and Kathy. They're great hosts. They are. I'm going to turn you down a little bit. I turned it up so that Mark could hear. Get that, Mark. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Donna. Anyone else? Jordan. Wait, you, give, you paid a month's worth last week. Well, I'm just a very happy guy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bob, is it something you are happy about? I don't enjoy the party. I enjoy being here, doing the project. So we're so, we are so glad that you come to visit us every year. Debbie, were you going to? Yes, I will do a happy tan. That's a sad tan because I wasn't able to be there. Um, one of Bob's caregivers who does four days a week 
got COVID, and so we've been Kelly and I. Thank God, Kelly's here, our oldest daughter from Alaska, and so we're getting a little more panicky about COVID. I heard something about California being hit to the hospitals and things like that. They're starting to fill up again, so yeah, we have to be cautious, please, everyone, especially now during the holiday season when you're with family and friends and people that you really don't see on a regular basis. Uh, please, please be careful. Uh, All right, Jim? Yes. Yeah. All right, I've got $5. Hey, thank you. Uh, Are you happy? Well, I am $3, which is in reference to the 3000 that I spent to get my, my dog's rocks out of her stomach last week, Thursday. <laughs> Uh, and then two dollars because Brittany is on her way home, uh, so I'm very happy about that. And then while I have the mic, I just wanted to let everybody know that Timothy Ramos has joined us on uh, on screen. Uh, Timothy is a guest who has been able to uh, pop in today. I had a great conversation with him yesterday, so welcome Timothy to the meeting. Thank you, Corey. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we were doing an introduction of guests and visitors, Um For Rex stopped in, so Rex is back to join us again. Rex, this was an application last week. We will talk, or we will go over tomorrow morning at our at our board of directors meeting. And if you're here next week, we will do the or the induction. Okay, good. Fun and having you. That's assuming you pass all muster and all that. We're, we're, we're pretty lenient that way. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else happy dollars before we move on? There's a hand over here. Jim, I'll, I'll add five dollars for the Holland party. Enjoyed hearing the history of Chuck's uh, nutcracker statues again. David, I'll, I'll put in 20. Um, I was privileged to be the only Gilbert Rotarian at uh, Chandler Rotary on Tuesday at noon, uh, along with three from Queen Creek Satellite. Four. But four. Which we, well, yeah, okay, four. <laughs> So, and did they have a good program? They had a great program. Um, a Mexican lunch. Sure uh, they raise a lot of funds. Think uh, the program or the, the meeting is fundraising. <laughs> yes, they, everyone ends up pitching in some money. It's all happy dollars. <laughs> all happy dollars. Chandler's a very happy place. Well, there's sports dollars. There's kids dollars. There's parents dollars. There's Grandparents' dollars. You know, dollars. they go through the whole gamut until they get everyone. <laughs> and thank you for representing us at the club. I hope you got up and said really good things about the Rotary. <laughs> okay. Uh, that right. would be extra. Pay him and study him. Pay I didn't want to get fined. <laughs> well, you know, we would probably cover your fine if it was that. It was $100. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't we? laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> so much for that credit. Yeah. Before we get into our annual review of the of the Rotary Foundation, um, I don't know if this went out to everybody or just one of the presidents, but it was a news release that came from Rotary International that said that basically Rotary has pledged $150 million towards the eradication of polio over the next three years, $50,000 a year. And at the same time, it is being matched two for one by the Gates Foundation. So every dollar that we raise for polio is going to be tripled. Uh, and then, then we, so between the Gates Foundation and Rotary International, we have a $450 million commitment. We are so close to getting rid of polio if we could only, could only get into those two countries that are, that are Blocking us, great job done. So, just uh, Pakistan and and Afghanistan, and New York, for obvious reasons. <laughs> for New York State, yeah. Um, 
they kind of block us at every at every effort that we have. Did you have a question? Because of what coming from So again, and I tie that in because we are just wrapping up our pennies for global schools that signed on. So every penny that those kids bring in is matched two for one as well. So we've got a good hold on that, um, or a good start on that. Corey, can you bring up that PowerPoint? Of course. Can you use the PowerPoint? Um, I would use a word. Perfect. Uh, every year, we are asked to do an update on the Rotary Foundation. Uh, again, kind of things kind of tie together. It's a perfect time to do it. Um, so we, I just want to give you a kind of brief overview. Uh, for those of you that have been in Rotary a long time, you understand what the foundation is and how it works. For those of you that are relatively new to us, hopefully this will help explain kind of the differences between fundraising on the local level and what the international does to fund some of their programs. Um, next screen, Corey. So it says, our mission is to promote world understanding, goodwill, and peace by improving people's health, supporting quality education, protecting the environment, and allevi alleviating poverty. The Rotary Foundation supports this mission through projects that impact lives close to home and around the world. Next. The word name, which is from here. In the award-winning Rotary Foundation, we protect children from polio, we fight waterborne diseases, and help refugees get health care. We promote peace and create safe environments for mothers and children. We help communities recover from disasters. Go ahead. The Rotary Foundation, um, all of this is built by generous contributions from our supporters, which allow us to maintain and expand our life changing programs around the world. The foundation transforms donations into service projects in which we, we unite to take actions and make a lasting impact. We'll have this added to the bulletin. Go ahead, Corey. From the Polio Plus program to Rotary Peace Fellowships, the foundation has used billions of dollars in contributions to reach our humanitarian goals. Now, this next one is going to be a little difficult to see, but let me give you an overview of it. There are three separate funds that make up the Rotary uh, the, um, Foundation Fund. The first one is the annual fund. Most of us have been around since they started the Every Rotarian Every Year. That was a request from Rotary International that every Rotarian submits $100 per year. And if we did that, we have over 1.2 million members worldwide, we would meet our fundraising goals. Uh, so close took it upon themselves to collect those funds, forward them on to, uh, to Rotary International. But you can make your donation several different ways. Most of us, or many of us, break it down into quarters. Um, we as a club uh, have uh, rather than asking for $25 a quarter, ask for $35 a quarter, which is $140 a year. That can be added on to your, to your uh, quarterly dues, and then George collects it and submits it. It can be done directly through direct deposit or direct putting uh, straight from your checking account to Rotary International. That's how Pat and I do it. Um, you don't even realize it's coming off every quarter. I get a little thank you. Blurb from Rory says, thank you for making your contribution. Um, it is not a requirement. It is a suggestion, but it's something that most Rotarians take to heart. So that's the annual fund. The second half of that is the endowment fund. Now, the endowment fund is relatively new. Uh, it grants a few things, but basically is uh, people as they're doing their estate planning, 
will set aside a portion of their estate uh, as an endowment or as a future donation to the to the uh, foundation. Once that bequest becomes active, uh, it gets put into the annual fund, or it's it's mixed with with monies from the annual fund. And let me take a step backwards. The annual fund, those monies that are donated, are invested for three years. The interest on the investment is used to pay the the uh, administration costs of the projects around the world. So no money that's put into the fund is used for administration. 100% of that money goes to the projects. At the end of three years, those funds come out, they go into the, the uh, general coffers that we'll talk about in just a moment, uh, and then any money that comes from the endowment during that year is, is added to that. So you've got, you've got your annual fund that was donated three years ago, plus any endowments, and that money is used then for all of our projects around the world, with the exception of Polio Plus. Polio Plus is separate unto itself. And Corey, I think that's the next slide. Oh, that's, okay, that's the, the shared designation. 50% of those annual funds that are collected, that want that, that third year contribution and those funds, 50% of that goes to pay for projects around the world. The other 50% comes back to the districts, and that is used to do the district matching grants and district projects that are funded on the local level. So for every dollar that we donate, whether it's $100 a year or $140 or whatever it is, half of that money comes back to our district after three years and is used for our district project. So if we want to do a matching grant, we use uh, we use district funds to help fund our project. So those funds that not necessarily come from the district, but come from the Rotarians in our club and in our district to help fund our local projects. Thanks, Gary. Polio Plus, as I said, this is a separate element, one of the three elements of the of the uh, foundation. Um, the monies that come in to this fund are given back 100%. There's no money that's taken off the top for administration. Uh, there's no money that's taken across to cover salaries for George Pettit or anybody else involved in our, <laughs> in our um, We've been involved with the Gates Foundation probably for 20 or 25 years. They approached us many years ago uh, and asked how they could help us with our polio project. We partner with the World Health Organization, with the CDC, and with the Gates Foundation to raise funds and uh, doing our industry. So again, I can't stress enough how important the Gates Foundation has been in helping us uh, not only raise funds, but, but accumulate monies that we can use um, for that uh, for that project. Thanks, Corey. And this is the areas of focus. Um, again, I apologize for this, but let me real quickly run through that. Uh, the foundation has chosen these causes because through them, Rotary can contribute to a lasting change. They align the work we do in communities around the world and maximize our global impact. They include peace building and conf conflict prevention, disease prevention and treatment, water, sanitation, and hygiene, maternal and child care, basic education and literacy, community economic development, and our most recent one is, is the environment. Go ahead, Corey. By the numbers, okay, over the last, I don't know exactly uh, when this was calculated on two, but so far uh, this year, there has been 467 district grants for a total of $31.1 billion, 55 disaster response grants for $3.1 billion, and 2,066 global grants for $130 million. You might want to point out, Jim, 
one of the global grants, and maybe not in this number, but one of the global grants we've done was the Navajo Water Project. Well, that might be coming. I may have jumped the gun. I, I, I didn't but that's, that's what we applied as a club, partnered with some folks in Mexico, and came up with all these matching funds uh, to start the Navajo Water Project uh, five years ago now, and four years ago. At least five years ago. And now it's been picked up by other clubs to, to take the lead on it to continue to get global grants. So. And if you haven't seen it in the July issue of the Rotary Magazine, there was a very, very article for the Navajo Water Project that came back into it, and it did recognize Gilbert Rotary as one of the founding institutions uh, to work with that, that project. So, um, you know, we see all these numbers, we hear all this, but again, when you think back, we actually have a hand in some of the successes that occur here. Um, it's amazing what a little club of 20 to 40 people uh, in Creek, Arizona, can make an impact worldwide. Mm -hmm. Every every dollar that we contribute uh, goes to something. Okay. One more slide, Corey. Uh, so so far, uh, 184 million dollars has been sent on basic education and literacy, and that includes all different types of programs from building schools uh, in. Uh, in uh, third world countries to supporting the Dolly Parton um, Im uh, Imagination Library to all different types of projects. If it has a basic education or literacy component, you can apply to the Rotary Foundation for that. Um, it's, it's things like uh, setting up classrooms in, in Rocky Point, Mexico, and all those types of things get involved. Uh, economic or community economic development, uh, 264 million. Disease prevention and treatment, one, th uh, I'm sorry, I convert the number, one billion, 20 million dollars to disease prevention and treatment. Again, polio plus is the biggest component of that. Although Rotary is now working because of what they've learned through the polio eradication project. Uh, how to approach other diseases. Malaria is, is one that's coming up. Uh, at one point, they were spending a lot of um, a lot of time and effort looking at what they could do for the Ebola vac uh, vaccination and things like that. So disease prevention and treatment is our biggest component. Uh, maternal and child health, uh, uh, 129 million. Peace building and conflict res uh, prevention, 128 million. Water, sanitation, and hygiene, $341 million goes into that. One side note on the water and sanitation project, when we were at the International Convention in Hamburg a couple of years ago, uh, walking through the vendor areas and, and uh, the, the, the tents that are set up by different uh, companies and manufacturers to kind of showcase their project or products, Kohler Company, which is the company that he used to work for back in Wisconsin, um, had had a display there where they were doing water filtration systems, totally outside of their area of expertise. I mean, they make showers and toilets and generators and things like that, but they got involved, they saw a need, they got involved with a water filtration system um, that, they were, that they were letting people know about uh, that could be used for, for Cleaning water on That's correct because the last one. Can I ask a question? Yes. <clears throat> Under disease prevention, does, and I'm not sure because I just don't remember, does Rotary support any of the research or just the application of the research? Do you know? I, I don't know for sure. I, I would guess that with their partnerships with, with World Health Organization and CDC, that they, that they do support that as well. Um, we can find out just how that billion dollar is broken down into, I'm gonna have her come in and, and take orders. Uh, she's, 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 she's been trying to be nice. Yeah, yeah not in the <clears throat>
It's a great organization. My real quickly, my my brother years ago was involved with this back in the nineties, and uh, did a lot of work. He's retired now, but and then my uncle way back in the sixties and seventies at Prescott. I think it was. Oh yeah, I'm talking to you. Other questions about the foundation? Rex was just coming. I was just saying this is a wonderful. They got a lot of my uncle was part of this group. Yeah, yeah. Rex was just coming. I was just saying this is a wonderful. They got like, my uncle. I was in high school, and I just was inspired by his. Involvement with Rotary, I would go to the meetings with him, and it was this wonderful. Um, I I can't say enough about the foundation. Um, no matter no matter what happens worldwide, um, if somebody from Rotary is there, if you remember, I don't remember how many years ago uh, they had the tsunami in Southeast Asia. And within days, we had uh, shipping containers full of those survivor kits ready to go. Um, and okay. what was what was George? What was the name of the um, shelter box? Shelter box. Yeah. Shelter box was a program that was uh, was started in England by a Rotarian who saw a need. Uh, Got together with Terry friends, started putting these boxes together, and it just moved from there. It took on the life of its own. The shelter box includes, um, in essence, a pop up tent of sorts, but it also has some other living essentials inside of it in terms of pots and pans, cooking uh, utensils, as well as some other things that typically might not be available. It's, it's more than just a tent. Yeah. And, and, um, if you, and if you look up Shelter Box USA, the um, solar blankets that are included are made in such a way that they can be used to catch rainwater. Right. Uh, they include uh, little, little small uh, water purification uh, systems and things like that. Yeah. So Toolkit that gets. Okay. You know, MacGyver would be proud of that. Just, just a brunch here. And I know when you look at the foundation on our website online. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. You have a choice of the general fund or the designated area to you know, water sanitation centers. Does that affect the amount of gravity material available to the different clubs? I don't believe so. I think when you designate that goes into the general fund, that would be the projects, but still 50% of those funds that are collected come back to the district. When we apply for grants, yeah, that's that's the fifty percent of the annual fund that comes back to us. So, how was that money allocated? You know, every every district. Um, they, they keep track of the of the donations, so that they know by district how many went out. Part of the complicating problem in Arizona is that we've changed district and merged districts, so we don't really know. How they tracked all of those things because District 5495 is brand new. We used to be 5490, I think. So they they, they they know how to keep track of it, and that's how it comes back. But it's only based upon the contributions from within that district and those members. So if some of our members ended up being part of the of this other district in Arizona, then those dollars went with them because they tracked the. the and then for that, you only have to choose on the whole state and one district. Yeah. Well, at one point it was three. Now it's back down to two. So. Other questions. And what I can do is I will um, I can get on and look at reports and give you a history of our club giving. Um, so I, I might get that to you, Donna, in terms of that <laughs> chart or that graph or something, so that you can include. How the Gilbert Rotary is doing. We, we can't keep track of Queen Creek separately. They've merged with us right now, but most of what you will see in the history and otherwise is Gilbert yeah. giving. No other questions? All right. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, kind of, again, time appropriate. We are going to be voting next Thursday at our meeting. Uh, on our slate of office, officers for the upcoming Rotary year, which runs from July 1st through June 30th of 2024. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have a 
gentleman with us that has agreed to to run for the office of of president elect nominee so uh, it's appropriate that that we know something about him um, so steve faust uh, you're on thank you thank you mr president parliamentarians and honored guests mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the opportunity to share myself with you and uh, tell you a little bit of my history I'll try not to bore you with uh, too many of the incidental things, but uh, uh, beginning with in 1956, I was born in a small town in North Dakota, probably none of you have heard of it, Valley City, on the banks of the Cheyenne River, the city of many bridges, they call it, also home of the Teachers College. Fortunately, my family started to migrate southwest. We just with snow banks and endless freezing. So I grew up basically in Denver, Colorado. However, I was fortunate enough that I was able to go back to North Dakota in the summers and spend my summers on the farm, which I think was a great, great advantage to me. It taught me the, the basic principles of commitment and hard labor. And there is plenty of that on a farm. Lately. You've got to be committed to hard work if you're going to live on a farm. After high school, I graduated in 1975. I was seeking some uh, freedom and adventure, so I enlisted in the United States Army. And there I learned a very valuable lesson or reinforced a very, a very valuable lesson that uh, winners never quit and quitters never win. It was about the third or fourth day of basic training. They took us out to the exercise field and they taught us how you crawled on the the battlefield, and they put us in 18 inch ditches full of mud with barbed wire strung across the top. And the drill sergeant would go along and gently motivate us, screaming uh, profanities and uh, insinuating things about our heritage. Well, by the end of that day, a half a dozen men actually quit. Can you believe? I didn't think you could just quit the army. And by the end of the second day of the same basic training uh, routine, about another six quit. So the morning of the third day, we're in company formation, and the quitters, who became now the first sergeant's clean platoon, standing there. And uh, the first sergeant came out and he announced that the company area needed some beautification. So he was going to have them dig rose garden beds for his rose garden he was going to plant. So in front of the barracks, it was 60 feet wide and had a 10-foot grass lawn in front of them. He had them start digging garden beds. We came back that first day, and these dozen men had actually completed the first garden bed. It was five feet deep, four feet wide, and 60 feet long. First person came out, addressed the company, and he was just amazed. Said, what a wonderful job they had done. Unfortunately, they had dug it too close to the road. So the next day, they filled that trench in, and they moved over five feet and dug it again. This process went on day after day in front of all 12 barracks we had. Graduation day, we all loaded up. We had our diplomas. We were all being shipped to different parts of the country to our next assignments and duty station. And the guards were still making trenches for the first sergeant growth. I don't think any roses ever got planted, <laughs> but eventually their, their discharge papers, which kept mysteriously getting lost, uh, were found, and I understand they were discharged from the army. That led to uh, my eventually, well, I actually served two years in the, the army in Germany. I was a military policeman in Frankfurt, Germany, and I had a great time. Uh, I worked with the German police for about six months. A great opportunity to see the world and learn a little bit about democracy. And if you don't believe we live in the best democracy in the world, go work with the German police for six months. <laughs> believe me, we live in a fantastic democracy. After the Army, I went back home, and I enrolled in Colorado State University. I thought I was going to become a veterinarian. Well, I wanted to be a veterinarian because my girlfriend wanted to marry a veterinarian. <laughs> 
Well, that didn't quite work out, and I found myself in the electrical apprenticeship. All through my 20s, I was able to travel the country and experience different cities. New York City, I love New York City. I'd be there today if they hadn't run out of work. I, I enjoyed it. Working in the subways in New York City was kind of a thrill. We were rebuilding subway lines, and uh, you learn a great deal about humanity from the subways in New York City. And rats. You learn a lot about rats. I lived in Boston for a short time. I was there during the uh, celebration of the Constitution. My in law worked with there at the time, and I was working in the Boston Navy Yard. Has anybody ever been to Boston? To, you know Boston. the Navy Yard? I'm from Boston. Okay, well, you know, back in the 80s, they converted it to the Boston uh, Medical Facility. <laughs> well, I was working in one of the taller buildings, and uh, George Bush, who was vice president, the first George Bush, was vice president then, and he was going to come out, and they were going to uh, inaugurate 200 uh, immigrants. And my who happened to be only for a certain time, and uh, they had told us the perimeter would be secured by the Secret Service. You couldn't come in, you couldn't get out. It's very, very locked down. So we're sitting there at our lunch table, and the Secret Service had come in, and they said, since we're the highest building in the facility, we needed to stay away from the windows. The snipers were on the rooftop, and they didn't want to see any faces in any windows. So we're all sitting there, and the building, the whole facility is locked down, and in walks my brother-in-law. He said, how did you get out of there? It's locked down. He said, no, I just walked in the back gate. Nobody was there. <laughs> so I said, okay, okay, well, you better be careful. You better just stay here with us and, and have lunch. And, and he said, no, I'm going to go down and join the celebration. I said, are you crazy? Two hours later, he comes back. He's wearing a freedom medal, and he's got a box lunch. I said, what on earth happened? He said, well, I went down there, and a couple of Secret Service men came up to me. He said, well, they said, born in Germany. His father was uh, in the army and married a, a German frau line. He spoke fluent German. And they came up and started questioning him, and he just starts rattling at him in German like he didn't know. And they said, oh, oh, you belong over here. And they took him over and put him in line <laughs> with the immigrants. And they gave him a tour of the, marched him up on old Ironsides on the, the battleship, gave him a tour, Walked him off, and as he's walking, off, he shakes the hand of George Bush. Walks into the ceremony, gets seated down. They come around. They they give everybody a freedom medal. He very proudly mounted that and kept it in a trophy case the rest of his life on his on his mantel place. And gave him a box lunch. Had him stand up and swear himself <laughs> in. Then he came back to where I was, and he says, "Do you want half my sandwich?" <laughs> Uh, what do you say? What Forrest, do you, I don't know. Forrest Gump. Right there. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just amazing, amazing. So, uh, it, it's a great experience for me. At the Iron Sides, you know, they drag it out once a year into the bay, and they turn it around. Well, for the anniversary, honor the anniversary, they actually fired all the guns. If you've ever seen an old battleship, well, actually, it's not wooden, it's, it's iron class uh, battleship. It's amazing to watch them fire the guns. They fire all the guns on one side, and the ship walks across the water. It literally pushes it across the water. Then they fire all the guns on the other side. And you can see it move 20, 30. It's an amazing sight. I mean, I held the country quite a bit. And eventually found myself back home and decided it was probably time to settle down. So I, I found a wonderful person who would marry me. And we began a family. In fact, uh, once we moved down here to Arizona, my oldest daughter graduated from EBIT, the fire science program. Yes, it was a great, great thing for her. She actually completed uh, going and getting a bachelor's degree in fire science, which led her to raise three kids in Atlanta, Georgia now. I'm not sure she ever worked in the business. Oh, yeah. oh you go right ahead. <laughs> so uh, let's see. We're we're in uh, Denver, Colorado, 
and I had worked for quite a few years for other people and decided that problem was not where I wanted to be. In. So I bought a Mr. Electric franchise and operated an electrical service company for about 10 years. It was a great opportunity to be able to set my own hours. As many of us know who were self employed, when you're self employed, you only cap a day. And the best part about that is you get to choose which 12 hour shift you're going to work. <laughs> okay, so that's well enough, enough said about that. <laughs> so uh, it was a great experience working for myself, long hours, hard work, uh, provided a lot of benefits for myself and my family. Uh, my kids never went without, uh, which was a great thing. So it gave them a lot of opportunity, and uh, it was very rewarding. At one point, I watched that thing for a whole other day. And my wife came out to the garage and she looked at me out there shivering and she said, Let's move to Phoenix. <laughs> and I thought, What is she talking about out of the clear blue? And she shut the door and I thought for about three minutes and I was shivering and I thought, You know, she's right. So I took my snowblower and I pushed it over to my neighbor's house. He was always admiring it. And I said, Do you want to buy it? It's yours. So he went got his checkbook. He wrote me a check, and and we were committed. We were moving to Phoenix. I went home. Well, since we're moving to Phoenix, I went and sold the snowblower. She said, "Are you insane? You want to move to Phoenix? Of course, we're moving to Phoenix." So, about three months later, here I found myself in Phoenix. Uh, we came down. It wasn't really that hot. My sister-in-law, who already lived here, assured us it wasn't that hot. We got here July 15th, <laughs> the hottest day of the year. She said, oh, by the way, if you've got computers, better bring them inside. I said, yeah, we have to be If you say, so I had, at 115 degrees, I rolled through this hot trailer over all our belongings and retrieved our computers. They seemed to be okay. That was a good part. And for a slight few minutes, I actually considered just getting in the truck and going back to Colorado. I'm glad I didn't because we we really enjoyed it. So, so somewhere along the line, being in a semi-retired state, my wife and I decided. Why well, I, I keep saying wife, I, I, I my ex-wife, my ex-wife, and I decided. There was going to be divorce soon if one of us, or if not both of us, didn't go get jobs. So she went to work for, for uh, Edward Jones, and I went to work for the state of Arizona at ASU. It was a great experience. I thought, I thought I would be able to go in there after having two master's licenses from the state of Alaska and one from the state of Colorado, and numerous journeyman's licenses from half a dozen states around the country. I'd be able to go in and take over the department. Probably Nobody is retired. They die out of those positions. <laughs> so I took an opportunity and I, I took a job in Alaska and I worked in Alaska for two years in the oil fields. It was a great experience. At 52 years old, I was by far the oldest man in the oil fields. And nobody over 40 works in the oil fields. So uh, two years of that, it was great fun. I left, came home, and I reconsidered my uh, option I had from the firm. So, uh, never seen myself wearing a suit and tie. I, I put on a suit and tie, went and bought one, broke down, and went to work for Edward Jones, which was a great experience. They have one of the best educational programs out there, financial advice. After three years, I took the opportunity to join in JP Morgan and I worked at different various Chase banks. And that was great fun, great education. Learned a lot about money, learned a lot about the banking system. Took me all the way up to money. I thought, well, time to do something different. You need to get that, Jim. Okay. So uh, in 2020, I, I retired or semi retired again and uh, went into my uh, second uh, vocation, real estate at the time. Uh, Went out there, charged ahead, sold the house, was getting ready to sell a bunch more, and along came the thing of COVID, and it shut us all down. Unfortunately for a lot of people, it was not a good thing. For my wife and I, I am remarried. My wife and I, Norma, many of you have uh, 
um, it was an opportunity for us. We uh, enhanced our ourselves. Uh, we both lost a lot of weight. I dropped about 35 pounds. I put about 15 back on, but still maintaining the bulk of it off. And uh, she became a yogi nut. And I joke, her constant, joke with her constantly. Every morning she gets on the mat and she does her hour to an hour of yoga every day. If anybody is ever interested in just getting in general tone, shape, good of mind, just turn on your VCR, or turn on your uh, uh, cable TV and go to uh, Prime and get one of the yogi programs. I love the programs. It's fantastic. I did it with her for six months. I couldn't keep up with her today. I couldn't. It doesn't look that hard, but it did. So I launched back into opening my company today. I operate a, uh, and I, I thank Mark the other night. He asked me uh, what I did, and I wasn't really clear was about what I did. So, so, so. It, well, it, it wasn't really clear because I think in terms of just one half of what I did. And I said I'm a private equity investor. Well, I work with people in partnerships to invest funds. But the other half of what I do is long-term rentals, lease options people. So I serve two clients. I serve a client that's looking for above average returns, looking for tax benefits, long-term investments, safe and secure investments, capital growth. The other part of what I do, I help younger families mostly that are looking for a home of their own, a family uh, residents, they can call their forever home. Typically, my clientele, it's a very, not narrow, but a, a swat of the uh, public out there that are hardworking. They drive pickup trucks. They have a lunch pail when they go to work. All they want to do is work for 40 hours, raise their families, and have a safe and secure home to live in, and I provide them. Help them get into them when they can't afford to buy them. They make a a space for them to be able to cash me out and down the road for years. And that basically brings me to Rotary. I've always thought there was a high hurdle to joining the Rotary. It is. It is. You have to come down and join. You have to actually come down and join. And well, here I am. So uh, I've become a member. Uh, I've found great opportunity uh, in meeting and other people like people. And, uh, serving the public uh, interest or general interest of the community. So it's been a fantastic uh, thing for me. I keep bugging my wife. She needs to join. Hopefully she won't take 40 years like some people have taken. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's where I'm at today. And I thank you for listening to my story. And if I can answer any questions, please ask. Good story. Thank you. Love it. It was a short 40 years it took me to get it. <laughs> but you said that important thing. You learn those things. You told them on the first time you met that you're climbing on. Those were chairs. Yes. Just touching that for me. Actually, I took him to the Queen Creek meeting. My wife's ex husband passed away recently. God bless him. And uh, they came into town for his funeral. Well, they knew him much longer than me. Me and I think he liked him better because he played golf and I don't. <laughs> so they came into his funeral and it was, uh, they had to come in down Monday and leave Thursday morning. So uh, they didn't have the opportunity to come to this meeting, but I took them to the Queen Creek meeting. And oh, what a, I think I'm his favorite son in law. So <laughs> Susie found out I was a Rotarian. He was the president of the Johannesburg South Africa Rotary Club. And uh, my mother-in-law, back then, they had the women's group, and it was called Inner Wheel. Inner Wheel. She was the president of the Inner Wheel Club that year. So they, uh, they came out of that. He was able to come down. My father-in-law is quite a unique individual. He was uh, Lieutenant Colonel in the South African Special Forces. The Citizens Army, they weren't the part of the government that were in suppression. They were the part of the government that were up on the board of protecting uh, against the uh, the communist invasion that was coming down and taking over Zimbabwe and Indonesia. And they would spend two months a year in the field, and the other 10 months they would go home and 
provide for their families. And he did that for 20 years. Unfortunately, our time ended. Uh, virtually everybody that was associated with the military we went to jail, which he did for six months, or they had to leave the country. He ultimately got in that jail. I want to know what you do in your spare time. No spare time? I seem to have a lot of it these days. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I actually took up mountain biking. And I got the handful about mountain biking. I went to Santan, uh, it's not alone, it's Santan Park. And I could never walk again. I'd be riding bike uh, for day, day after day. It, you just can't hike anymore. You got to ride. <laughs> thank you, Press. Well, Steve, thank you very much. Thank um, you. You did a great job. We, we needed to hear some of your story. So uh, it gives us an opportunity to. Kind of look behind the guy in the beard uh, who sits at the table. Uh, yeah, the beard you know, you know, All right. Um, we are done. Enjoy the rest of your breakfast. Have some fellowship. Uh, last thing I want to say is most of us have been in the mail over the last week and a half or so. If you're on the Rotary uh, mailing list, got this brochure that says give the gift of Rotary. Um, please look at it. Please consider making a donation if you're already part of. Every rotation every year, you're, you're good to go. If you want to do something over and above, that's entirely up to you. But please put that into your in the back of your mind for the holiday season. Enjoy breakfast. Coffee. Bye. Tim, did you want to talk about carryover items? Oh, I. Um, you can do it. Oh, yes, we do have them on there. Give me one second. Um, I think the first thing on that list was pennies for polio. We are having our first pizza party today. Um, Diane, you want to give us any updates? Oh, welcome to polio. Yes, pay for polio. So, um, we uh, got the money from Greenfield. It totaled one thousand twenty nine dollars seventy cents. Wow. Ten thousand. Is that right? No, one hundred and two thousand nine hundred seventy pennies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the winning class raised one hundred sixty seven forty dollars. That was the fifth grade class by um, teacher Mrs. Diacala, and she they're getting their pizza party today. Uh, they requested it Tuesday that it be today. So um, we're kind of scrambling a little bit. If anybody wants to join Jim and uh, Corey, will be there as well, at least to drop off pizzas. That would be wonderful. Uh, it's at noon. Greenfield is on the corner of Elliott and Greenfield. I think it's a northeast corner. Uh, Heidi Duffy was the coordinator. She's the president of the PTSO for Greenfield. Uh, thanks to Dr. Mark Leonard and Steve Ballast, President uh, for finding a place that takes coins that will count all the coins. We are now members of the uh, Mountain America Credit Union and we'll be dumping coins in soon uh, to find out how much Highland Park raised. <laughs> it's still in the three gallon containers. Uh, Corey Christensen is the, is the president-elect. Um, she is the campaign founder for Penny's Polo of the Gilbert Club. Thank you, Corey. She's oh, amazing. no, Diana, this is all you. I'm, I'm helping. <laughs> and um, family events are limiting my participation in the parties. But um, anybody who wants to come, I believe, December 19th are going to be the other two parties, uh, one for Highland Park and one for Burke Elementary, who is currently in their campaign. I believe that's going to be, their parties will be on December 19th, but that will be, and I, I can send that out once it gets proved up by the schools. And uh, that's all I have to report. Thanks, Corey. Thank you, both of you, for outstanding, and David as well. I know that he's actively participating 
my notes here. <laughs> um, <laughs> next Friday, the 16th, again, uh, is that opportunity to volunteer. We've got two opportunities during the day. We've got one in the morning. Uh, wrapped up. Uh, that is at the Arizona Children's Association. We're going to go there and help uh, sort gifts that have been donated uh, to their program. And then that evening, uh, we are looking for volunteers to help out at Boys and Girls Club. They are having their holiday party, and we are going to assist with uh, herding cats. And what's that? The, the Boys and Girls Club is from 5 to 7. Five, yeah. And you have to have a clearance for that, too, don't you? Well, actually, yeah. I, I was there yesterday picking up some holiday cards that the, the kids have put together. Jim said, don't worry about it. And he says, we come, we'll give you a visitor's badge and you're good to go out. It's not like my church to, would take six weeks. You don't have to jump through a lot of hoops. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing for the good of the order note here was that if anybody does have Christmas cards that they want to to have distributed to the assisted living homes, get them to me. I'm going to start handing out cards tomorrow, uh, depending upon how many I collect. And then uh, again next week, uh, I'll make uh, a second run. In the past, we, and I think this is the third or fourth year we've done this, uh, we've given up to 1500 christmas cards to the nursing homes at one point but uh, it's kind of tailed off since then but if any do you have cards for <laughs> so on our card do we just it's just generic just generic, generic. happy holidays exactly. on the envelope you don't even have to put them in envelopes oh, if you have we'll just uh whatever you have again i I usually stop at uh, Target after the holidays and pick up a couple boxes for fucking half for two dollars, or if I have extra cards left over after I send them out to family and friends, I just uh, set them on the side. Uh, this year I had to hunt for them because I had to move some stuff around on me. <laughs> but I've got, I've got cards to send out. Yes, Mark. No, getting back to the, uh, the foundation then. Charitable gifting. I'm surprised that Rotary doesn't promote uh, qualified charitable distributions more. I mean, it's such a common factor with older people. Um, that's money right off the front page of your term. And well, even though we're promoting younger membership, we're still a sizable portion of Rotary. People buy that seven and a half plus oh, to do, where if you don't oh, take God. a certain amount out of that account every year, the IRS will. Assess a significant penalty in addition to taxing you on the amount that you didn't take out. And, uh, uh, it's not rocket science. You, you know, the, the key thing is you have to tell whether whoever is holding your IRA or whatever deferred account you have that it has to go trustee to trustee. The Vanguard, the Dowdy, whoever it is, has to send that money directly to the charity of your choice. You can't take the money out and send it on yourself. But that might be. That might be a good conversation to have with someone at our district level. And I thought maybe Ed Anderson was going to join us today as our, as our assistant governor. Um, well, it won't make a lot of sense to incorporate yeah. that as part of the rest of the session. Right. Because they're missing, if they're not doing that, they're missing a great opportunity. Okay. I, go ahead, David. Yeah, Mark, you got to get in on this one too. I started about six months ago to take annual distribution from IRA directly to Rotary. And I contacted Rotary and they sent me um, the rules that I had to follow, the directions to follow for Rotary. And uh, ours is with Wells Fargo, Wells, <coughs> excuse me, too much oatmeal, Wells Fargo Advisors. And Wells Fargo Advisors, um, we first went to the bank and of course they knew nothing about it. So then we contacted an office in Los Angeles and they said they had never heard of it. 
they don't didn't know how to do it, but they sent us the standard paperwork. None of the standard paperwork would give the deduction directly out of our account. Uh, we were one reason we were doing it is because um, they take, when I get my annual draw in October, they take 10% Arizona tax out, 10% federal tax out, and then the rest is added, of course. And so we, if we could donate that 100% directly from IRA, from uh, Wells Fargo Advisors to Rotary, then they would pick up another uh, 1500 bucks. They was a specifically the Rotary Foundation. It has to be a, a C3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just Rotary they, International. No, yeah. no, no, Foundation. I'm sorry, I said International. Rotary Foundation. It, the other piece is it has to be a specific kind of fund. Um, so it can't just be a standard IRA. There's a specific name that Mark shared at the beginning in terms of. Well, I'm not, if I haven't made it out to the Rotary Foundation, I haven't sent the check to me. Okay, well. The, the whole thing, though, is they still take the tax out, and then you have to refile for that tax. They will not send it, and then they charge you $35. Yeah, well, this is, I'm going to Wells Fargo Advisors now, not Chase or some other some other bank. Uh, they, they said, no, we're taking the tax off the top no matter what, because IRS will fully utilize it if we don't send it off. So we called another uh, Wells Fargo advisor. He got basically the same thing, and then ended up calling the third one, and had, they read us the entire book on what to do <laughs> over the phone for a couple of hours, and the paperwork would still not match up, and the amount of money that we that we would save in the taxes, giving the money to uh, Rotary International, would then come out. They would only send it on the federal wire. Mm -hmm. That federal wire and it cost us anywhere from thirty-five dollars to fifty-five dollars or something. Uh, out of that income, which would then the same amount of taxes that we were trying to give back to Rotary, um, and none of the paperwork matched up. So there was no way you could designate to Rotary Foundation write in anything and not not do it. And so then after six months of dealing with three different uh, Wells Fargo, um, we gave up on it. And I just, when we get the check, I just, uh, I, we just write out another check and she it. Uh, it's, 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 a mess. it's a mess. It's a mess. I wonder if putting a portion into a self-directed IRA would be a more direct route. And then dealing with that because typically with your financial advisors, they're all here to not take you. Yeah. You know, everything they can to prevent you from taking your money out. Mm -hmm. And they don't have much education other than that. Uh, not that part. Well, they had not. They had, they had never done it. The three offices, even with the supervisors, had never done anything like that before. And, I, and there's no way to fill out the paperwork to designate where that goes. Yep. And that they are a uh, uh, foundation of the nonprofit 503 C. I will tell you that um, if I've done this since for a few years now, since I was 70 and a half. And when they changed the start date to 72 and a half, they kept the qualified charitable distribution date at 70 and a half. And it's still not on your 1099R. So you used to have to back, you used to have to back it out because there's two lines on the face, first page of the return. And so you show the gross amount. If you took a ten thousand dollar distribution that was required, you sent two thousand over to the charity. You report ten thousand on the first line, eight thousand on the second line. The software allows you to do that, or your preparer would know how to do that. Yeah. Well, we were just trying to get rid of having that income show up yeah, as additional income. income. Our whole thought was to bypass us completely. So the money would go directly to the foundation so it wouldn't show up on um, we, we do that as part of your return preparation well we know that but we that would be then showing that and then asking to take this actually again and then we'd still be paying tax on that ring the bell <laughs> okay. yeah i'm not a taxi so yeah go ahead. 
it's complicated. It's complicated, and, and they, like Steve says, they don't make it easy for you. Um, but there has to be. Yes, it's a question. It's a question, it's a question as, as Steve said. It's a question of finding the guy who has done one to know how to do it, as opposed to the general training, just whoever's working the phone that day. Mm -hmm. for yeah. Yeah. And believe it or not, most financial advisors do not have a whole lot of education in anything other than sales. There's a company in town, iradirect.com. And you can look that up online, you can actually call down and talk to one of their people mm -hmm. and tell them what you're trying to do. They're directed IRAs, and they might have the secret to doing that because they actually know IRAs. Oh, yeah. we, have, we have a board meeting tomorrow if anybody wants to come. <laughs> Happy Gopher House. We'll see you tomorrow, George. One last thing. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say one last thing here before I head out. Um, I know a lot of us were able to go to the Hollands. Some of us were not able to make it. Uh, there's another opportunity for fellowship. We are hosting, let me see if I can pull it up here for you guys, Barimo's Boats and Bourbon. So Saturday the 17th, uh, the light lake two festival of lights boat parade is going to be in our backyard um, it's an open house so feel free to come and go as you please um, but we'll have fellowship we'll have some stuff out here and uh, a lot of bourbon so hope to see you guys there thanks Corey. and and there'll be plenty of uh to bourbon. What, what, i'm sorry say that Said you'll have enough life jackets uh, for being on the boats if there's too much bourbon? Uh, well, only so many people can be on the boat, but the fence should keep everybody else just fine. Okay. No, I'm kidding. All right. Good. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, and we'll, we'll continue to push that. That's a week from Saturday. Seven o'clock tomorrow morning. I lost up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, 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 yes, we're trying to get yeah. some of working. We've got the five or six stations. I was running and all those nights and those questions and then we Okay, I it's on uh, Gilbert Road, Gilbert, between Warner and Hill. It's an older house from the school. Well, in that general area, yeah, it's a, it's a little white craft spot. With the white fence. White fence, yeah. yeah. I haven't been there in years. Thanks for writing it in. Yeah, it's so good to see you. I was so bummed. I had a new Christmas dress. I had my gift. I had my gift. Yes, sir. That's just. You know, with it being so close, we have two adults. Did you try to tell them you spend so much here and don't arrest me? No, all of them. In different states, one in the Boston area and one in the Minnesota. I do it with Fidelity. I do it with time. So I do it for a church too. Our I guess, to the the church with a no, no, volunteer. Well, so this this is the only way we're taking Bob's paper. We're going to double up and give him a flu shot and a distribution myself. Then I just go online. But then our caregiver has it. We have to do that again. We have a hard time here the last few weeks. We're tired. We want our caregivers to have a I tell her I really, really suffered something in my heart because of my wrist writing. So, I'm going to have surgery again. 
And they say they were male, it's they were male, or wires, you know. So mailing is free wiring, they charge it for federal wire and they use the charge. Why are they squares doing? I don't know. I mean, it's going to take you to place. They try to be taken. It's hard. Are you going to come work I choose to take it anyway. You can take it whenever you want. I think, yeah. Did she give you? Yeah, I can choose the date. But I sent you the change document. I don't think so. I don't think We talked about it. She would take it every time. Yeah. 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 I thought she was going to send it out to us so that. We thought we the next not show up as income on our 1099. That's not true. And they chose that was And then on the bottom, the for the UCB. She's at the compare. As we swear that some of that money went directly to the charities. Anyway, Wells Fargo would have been. It's like that. And they were illegal. It would be less than two and a half weeks away from Christmas. Oh my gosh, my daughter wants to put up the big history instead of the small one. I just think this all goes back to the 17th Trump tax act. I'm not going to be here. raise that. So I'll be there tomorrow and bring some cards. Oh, okay. Give a card to you know, yeah. Uh, because yeah, well, it all easy. Easy. Like, so it started out with Christmas cards, yeah. and then we did the, the, we did um, the directions, you know, how to do the we did Easter cards. I mean, one more card in the middle of the year, um, it's kind of it's kind of background. All you have to do is taxpayer to be able to prove that the money went directly to them all for the charity. You didn't touch it. She'd take it. Yeah, these kids. Yeah. 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 But they wouldn't send it for any of them. No, they wouldn't. Well, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay. Why? Well, I need that one hour to change trustees. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, how do they do this one? Well, they need to draw the money out. Transfer it. Help those guys out. You should write down IRA direct. Mason, how that's it. I think it's right. IRA direct. Yeah, IRA direct. And just call. Their agents are sitting there trying to hear and tell them what you're trying to do and ask them if they can help you. And if there's a solution, they'll have it. Tell them you don't want to be paying the big fees. I can't get it straight. How much, once you reach 70 and or 72 now, Mark? And a half. Mark, when do you have to start taking the, the deduction around the uh, It was 70 and a half. Yeah. And they, then they, under the Original Trump Act that changed to 72 and a half. Now it's going to go up again. Oh, it is. Yeah, but that doesn't change the qualified share, but they kept that at 70 and a half. So you can be 74, over and a half, you can still do a qualified shareable distribution.
just not through Wells Fargo advisors. <laughs> I didn't want to harp on Wells Fargo, but yeah, I was really fed up with it. That really hurt Yeah. Yeah. I'll be seventy and a half. Actually, I'm already seventy and a half. Oh. But my financial guy has never called me and said you have to start drawing down or anything. No. You don't have to do anything. No, but what you could do is spend money right. The next part will do is ninety percent of people don't itemize them. Yep. Right. Yep. But we have to pay back. <laughs> so I can't believe he filed in Texas residency. Okay, so when you have to start taking out, yeah. Okay, when it when it's required, what's the percentage? How do you how do we determine? Uh, they did. Uh, there's tables for that. <coughs> so it's only twenty six and a half. tables. It's okay. I can they, turn it out for you, the, give it to you, but I don't have it memorized. Yeah, you choose a date and it starts out about four percent. Oh, okay. See, somebody told me it's, twenty six and a half. I, just, I think the first year twenty four. They tell you how long you're going to live. I'm going to live a long time. Now, can you take a distribution before the required minimum? Oh, sure. Yeah. Because we have mine. 59 and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we give up. Yeah. Take it before 59 and a half, then you get penalized for that. Yeah. Well, the other. Yeah. We're well, that. we have that other choice. They said, just take it all. Give it to them. And I said, <laughs> and I said, yeah, what are you going to start paying? And they said, my eight. Oh, no, I can take all out without paying. No, well, I'll take it all out there. Right? Oh, I think we give him the required minimum distribution every week. Yeah, yeah. The way things are going to market, I'm like, all right. Yeah. We had that at the last. Right. Well, you're the young guy in the crowd, Jim. Yeah. So I think Diana's younger than that. I didn't want to bring it up. It looks like you were getting ready to rush out of the anyway. when, when we went to um, Chandler Club, when we were here and we were talking about uh, recent, you know, donating the money for the parade, um, and they said it's because they didn't raise you know, the 60000 they needed to get in the parade or something. I heard it's kind of people, something. Uh, it said we didn't, they didn't raise enough money for it, but uh there's that's because four clubs opted out that's why it was announced at chandler or just said no here and whatever yeah. there's no budgeting that's why they said we're short they did need to it did come kind of the last minute thing yeah. mm -hmm. um, but if they're doing it next year they got to start playing yeah well they they're using this year's money that they raised this year to for that. This year, but that they raised on the shirt sales. Uh, I don't know if it's the shirt sales or well, whatever money they had um, designated for. Okay. Because we designated five hundred dollars between the two clubs, and we contacted Brian Larson and Garcia, the guy who's the president mm -hmm. of, uh, of the chairman club. And never got a word back. And then, funny, Jordan's the one that said last week that Tony School never. Uh -huh. yeah. Never mind. Never mind. We're not going to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, very, very poor follow-up with the whole thing. Yeah. But a lot of clubs, I think, just stopped. Yeah. Like, yeah so, so there was another thing too. Um, Corey's going to be president. 